Now, this next part is key. If you don't do anything, do this because this will get you a job. You are listening to Driven. This is Amon Bunsel. This is episode two, and we're going to talk about the struggles that you must go through to launch your career. All right, welcome to the show. So getting out of college is interesting because right after college or school, you need to get a job. And that can be very difficult. Why? Because school is very structured. So all throughout your life, school has been something where you went to and the teachers told you what to do in school. The parents told you where to go and what to take with you. The teachers told you all about the books, what to read, what not to read what homework to do. So it's very structured. You knew exactly how to get from point A to point B and what will be required for you to do to pass the class. Well, things change when you enter the job world. Um, sure, there's a manager involved who might give you an assignment or two. I'm sure they will. And uh, there's a quote passing grade, I suppose, involved where if you don't do the job right, you could get fired. Uh, but it is vastly different from school. So work itself is different, but the job market is actually just a whole another beast. If you're a student and you haven't yet stepped into the job market where you had to be competitive, well, this is going to be something different for you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How to go ahead and enter that competitive market, how to excel in that competitive market, how to make sure that you land the job that you want, and how to actually not only retain that job, but get promoted and get more pay as you work at that job. Okay, first order of business is to figure out what your market worth is. I know that's gonna be a little bit of a strange subject to talk about, and what do I really mean by quote worth? Well, the market actually places a worth on your skills that you've acquired. Now, this is not a worth of the person. It has nothing to do with who you are, um, how short or tall you are, how old or young you are, what your skin color is or anything like that. It's all about what your skills are worth in the market today. And of course, every company you're gonna apply to, they're gonna want the most highest qualified person they can get at the lowest pay. Well, there could be exceptions, you know, employers are, you know, getting wiser and hiring other people that are coming out of college. Generally speaking, that's going to be the case. They're going to want the most highest uh, skilled person at the lowest cost they can find. So therein lies the chicken and the egg problem. Now, a college student or a student coming out of school, maybe they're not going to have any type of experience. However, the company that you might be applying to, they want a certain level of experience. So most companies in the market will actually look for people with experience. So you can't get a job because you don't have any experience and you can't get an experience because you don't have a job. And it's a cyclical problem. So how do you go about in solving that problem? Well, so let's say if you're about to graduate or you are have graduated and you're in the market now, I want you to start thinking of your skill set, what skills you have, what trade you can do and all that kind of stuff, your ability, not you as a person, but your ability to do things. I want you to start thinking of them as a tradable or marketable item. So first things first, you must identify what your marketable skills are. Now, this is one thing that people might kind of think too much about and, and say, well, well, I can't code or I can't build a robot, but it's actually more simpler than that. Well, there are hard skills, definitely like programming, being able to you know take a computer apart and actually put it together or build things or engineering. Um, and there are also softer skills, which are all about how to lead people, how to talk to people, how to communicate well, how to build bridges, connections with people. So you must sit down and jot down every single keyword every single word that comes to mind when you think about what you can do. Now you gotta dig deep and figure out what did you do in school? Were there any times when you took a leadership role? Um, are you the type of person who keeps lists, who is very organized? Are you the type of person who actually feels really at home within Excel? Now, one of the sought out skill actually that's in the market is the ability to, to hustle 
And I know that word is kind of everywhere, but right now I'm gonna talk about it within a job context. What does it mean to hustle at a job? And you're not an entrepreneur and you're just trying to build a career. Well, let's say if your boss gives you an assignment, are you able to take it right away in the next 10 minutes, start executing, start looking at what you need to do, people you wanna talk to, what goals need to be hit as part of this task? Um, If you're the type of person who doesn't need handholding and they can actually take the work and just go, that is a highly marketable skill. There is a key, key advantage that you have coming out of school or college versus somebody who's been at their job for 10, 20, 30 years. You have something to prove. And what that means is you can put a lot of legwork in this job to make sure that you let them know that you are actually a go-getter. Let them know that you are actually a person who can execute and get things done. So first things first, you need to be able to market yourself. And this is where you need to practice. So coming out of college, you need to be able to speak. You need to be able to talk to somebody when they're in front of you and highlight the skills that you have. Now, I know there are people out there that are super shy and they can't sort of toot their own horn. Um, But um, just as someone like Gary Vee teaches how to be an entrepreneur and how to actually do that properly, when you're trying to get a career and you want to be someone who is actually getting higher pay, actually getting accomplished more things at work, and actually getting promotions and things like that, and you're not the type of person who just kind of settles in into a job for like 30 years, well, you need to be a higher performing individual. And for you to actually do that, you need to transform yourself from the student to the actual person who is going to go get that job, a competitive individual inside the market. It's not easy. And I know I know in today's world, jobs in general get a very negative connotation. And you know what? Rightly deserved because some jobs out there are just too crazy. There's a lot of work, not enough people, and a lot of disconnect between management and all that kind of stuff. You know, all that is for another day to talk about, but you as a person who is getting into the job market right now, you need to be able to communicate your marketable skill worth to other people. So this is where you need to start practicing. And so the first thing you gotta do is just write something about yourself. You need to go ahead and write something like a one pager or a couple of paragraphs, which explain who you are. And, you know, don't talk about Street Fighter 2 and how you love playing that. Five. Whoa. Well, you know, don't talk about like how you love playing Street Fighter 5 or Fortnite. Get that out of the, don't get that in there. Uh, talk about your accomplishments. Okay. Um, and If you're taking my advice, you need to be a powerhouse when you talk about yourself. When you talk about yourself and explain how skillful you are, you need to be able to share that with the other person without any hesitation, without any sort of fakeness. It needs to be real, it needs to be you, but you just need to be able to communicate it better. As you're getting the verbal one-on-one communication down, I also need you to go to Google and search up what exactly the resumes look like in your field. So if you, by the way, if you have not actually narrowed down a field, you need to do that at ASAP. So it cannot be quote business. It's just, no, that literally makes no sense because it's, you know, anything in business, that's everything. So you need to be able to go and tell somebody exactly what you're applying for. And so what you need to do is spend some time narrowing down what you really want. And then once you've narrowed it down, you need to be able to figure out exactly what type of jobs are in there and what their titles are. And once you have the titles, you need to be able to go and search for other people applying for jobs with um, those titles, okay? Um, So, and then why do that? Well, you're gonna get some samples of resumes out there. So you're gonna actually do some homework and figure out what are the other applicants putting on their resumes. Now, there are gonna be bad resumes out there, there are gonna be amazing resumes out there, and you're just gonna say get about, say, 20 to 30 or 50. Let's just say at least 25. Okay, once you have your 25 resumes, you're gonna look at all the resumes and figure out what the strong points are within each resume. Um, And then you're gonna start using those in something that you would construct. 
okay, once you've done all that, you should have a resume that looks pretty good. Now, this next part is key. If you don't do anything, do this, because this will get you a job. And I call it guerrilla tactics. That's what this is. So when you don't have a job, you need to work eight plus hours a day. And I know that's hard, but you're gonna need to put in the work. You need to hustle to make sure that you understand what the market is, where you are in the market, and how to approach people, and you're gonna to have to find people to talk to. And that's what this whole next step is all about. Let me actually share this with an example. Let's say if you figured out what you want and you have gone ahead and looked online on different job sites, maybe start with ZipRecruiter or something else that kind of aggregates everything. That's ziprecruiter.com. So if you go there, it, it's going to aggregate a lot of the jobs in one site. So let's say you figured out what kind of job you want, what kind of position it is, and what your title will be, and you go ahead and find, say, five jobs from there. Okay, let's take one of those jobs. And sometimes it'll have a company's name on it, sometimes it won't, right? Um, however, the here's what, what I want you to do. There's different tactics for each of these situations. If the company's name is on there already, great. You're, you can move on to step two. But if it's not, then take the title of the job posting and then go ahead and Google that. Once you Google that, it'll show up on multiple different areas. And look at them all to figure out where this job listing is coming from, which company. Okay, once you have determined what company it's coming from, I want you to go ahead and hop on over to LinkedIn. Now, pause right here if you don't have a LinkedIn profile. Stop everything. Go create yourself a LinkedIn profile yesterday and fill it out with appropriate information. Think of it like your resume, okay? I want you to make sure that it is clean, it has a nice picture, start adding people who are in your field to that profile, um, add other students or some people that you worked with, um, and actually go ahead and send them requests to recommend you, to actually write recommendations. You can do that, you can go ahead and say, hey, Joe, can you please write me a recommendation for the work I did for you, X, Y, Z. You can even kind of leave them a review if you want to or if they want you to, if you know, if they ask. But the main point is they should write a review for you if you did a really good job. You need to get some reviews so that employers can see your work. I'm not going to lie, the employers do look at those reviews and if the reviews are pretty good, that's actually a pretty good plus. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have a resume and a LinkedIn account and it's pretty decent looking LinkedIn account. Okay, so the job posting you had and the company name that you discovered, go ahead and search that company on LinkedIn. Now, depending on what type of job it is, you need to go figure out what department that must have come from within that company. Now on LinkedIn, you can look up people associated with a single company and you can read their titles and they'll tell you a little bit about their departments. So you can go ahead and sort of try to figure out who would be working in what department. Let's say if you're going for an IT job, you definitely should look for like a director of IT or developers or QA personnel. Like you should look for those type of people working in that company. This is now key. What you need to do is try to make a connection with somebody who is high enough. Now don't start super high, like don't contact the CEO or something like that, although that would be crazy hustle. <laughs> but yeah, don't start there, but go talk to the mid-level manager, the actual, you know, the manager of the IT group. Okay, say, hey, my name is so-and-so and I'm really interested in this position. Here's my resume. I wanted to know if it would be possible to get you out for lunch, you know, tomorrow or day after tomorrow at 12, you know, blah, blah, blah. Write something up that's nice, that introduces yourself and maybe has a couple of your skill sets in there so you can say, I'm a good match for this position and send that off. What you've done just now is you've circumvented all this processing where your resume goes into this pile and there's an auto sort of sifter that sifts through resumes to figure out which ones have certain keywords and those get highlighted and picked off and delivered to the HR person. The HR person reads all of them and to figure out which ones might be good qualifiers. Then they take a few out, out of that whole pile and discard the rest. And those few go to the person, the manager who's trying to hire somebody. That's gonna be very difficult to stand out in.
So what we're doing instead is we're going to go to LinkedIn and figure out who it may have come from and try to gorilla tactic our way in from the back door. And you're going to find the manager or the lead developer or now I'm talking about IT job or a lead whatever in that department and say, hey, I happen to notice there was a job posting out there for blah, blah, blah. Are you still hiring? And here's my resume. And by the way, I'm really good with blah, 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 blah. I'd love to meet you, take you out to lunch. Okay, that right there is going to get you a quicker yes or a no than this whole process. Your resume would skip the entire process, go directly to that person who might be hiring. This has actually happened to me. Now, I'm not directly involved in hiring, but I can influence hiring in my department. So the other day, somebody reached out and said, hey, and we didn't even have an opening. And the guy's like, in case you have an opening coming up or in the future, here's my resume. I'm looking for a job, blah, blah, blah. And I took that person's resume and said, hey, you know what? This is a person out of college and um, maybe they have the skill sets we need. And I looked at the qualifications. They look decent, but not that great. So I took it to my CIO. So that resume went straight from me to the chief information officer and went to the lead developer. And the lead developer looks at it and says, not enough experience, we're going to pass. And that's okay. You know, but the fact that that person went straight from the back of the line to straight on my desk and then on the desk of the CIO within 15 minutes, that's powerful. And how many times do I get an email like that? Hardly any. No one's doing this. I don't know why they're not doing this, but they're not. No one is like doing the legwork to get their jobs. It's really mind boggling. So you need to do that. Now, I got started in the industry over a decade ago, but I did something similar. So I used to get up early in the morning and spend an entire eight hours or more a day looking at job applications and submitting to them. And what I would do is I would download the job requirement itself and make sure that my resume was speaking the same language as the job. Now imagine doing that multiple times a day, like 10 times a day, or maybe even more, 15 times a day. And what you end up with is like 10 or 15 different resumes. I had to keep track of every single resume that went out, when it went out, who it went out to, and all that kind of stuff. But what I did was I'm, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't speaking a totally different language than what they were speaking in their requirements. So it took me a couple of weeks of that kind of a tactic to get a job and rest is history. Uh, but that was very, very tough because every single day you have to relentlessly go after this. And this new tactic that I'm talking about is kind of similar, but it actually works even better because of this whole LinkedIn and, and how it's permeated the entire market now. So you're gonna go ahead and figure out who to contact on LinkedIn and go ahead and contact them. This should not be that easy. It's gonna take a lot of doing. You're probably gonna send out 10, 15, 20, 50 different emails out on LinkedIn or messages on LinkedIn, and you'll get maybe one or two replies back. But that's okay because you currently don't have a job and this is gonna be your job. So every single day, work on this as if this is your job. Now, assuming you did that and you landed an interview, within the interview, you need to display a drive. Um, I don't wanna say aggressiveness, but you need to be passionate. I totally get it if you're not 100% super passionate about this job, but you could be passionate about this job being a stepping stone to the next job, which is maybe your passion, or not the next job, but the goal in mind where you wanna be in two years or three years or five years, whatever. Um, so you need to find the passion within you and you need to sort of activate it and you need to display that within the interview. And the interviews can go a couple of ways. Interviews can turn into quizzes if you let them or they can be a conversation. So here's my personal opinion on that. If you're too quiet and timid in an interview, that's going to be a quiz. That's going to turn into an exam and you know how exams are. Uh, I don't need to tell you that. But um, 
But if you have a conversation, you lean forward and you speak to them like a friend, you are confident, um, they're going to respect that confidence. This is when, this is where the one pager really comes in handy. You've already practiced your elevator pitch and now this is the moment to shine. So you need to make sure that they understand who you are and what kind of skill set you bring to the table. This is where you pat yourself on the back and make sure that they understand that you are confident and you can get the job done. Okay, let's say you've landed a job. What now? Well, remember all the stuff you talked about in the interview? Well, now is the time to actually shine and actually show those skill sets. This is where I think the most important skills is to actually the ability to hustle inside of a job. Okay, when you're given an assignment, go after it like a rabbit dog. Make sure that you get it done earlier than anybody else. Make sure they know that you are the person who starts on things early and who gets stuff done early and get stuff done right. Don't be scared of getting more work or getting assigned something. Uh, just find ways to get stuff done faster so that you're always ahead of the curve in terms of like getting stuff done. This type of action at work is gonna build so much value that they're gonna be like, wow, this person is amazing and they just came out of college. So that is what you need to do. So that's the kind of thinking that you need to have to excel at work. Lastly, but not least, you being in a powerhouse of a person who brings value to the job, who actually executes on things faster than anybody else, since you spent the time to figure out what your qualities were and how to actually quantify them, how to communicate them, now is a time where you actually take that communication skill that you've developed and negotiate raises, negotiate higher positions. What you need to do is create a working relationship with your boss where they understand that you are career focused, that you put the career first, and that you are here to learn and observe and retain as much as possible. Now this is where you need to learn different tactics on how to negotiate salaries, how to actually negotiate different perks. And there are some books out there, I believe there's a book called How to Get a Raise Within Seven Days. Um, I know that's a strange title, but actually has some really good insights in there. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link it below in the description. But the whole idea here is that you need to prepare yourself for advancements in your career. Now, note that if you actually don't take ownership of this, your career will, you know, sort of not go anywhere. It'll fizzle out. Um, no one's going to tap you on the shoulder and keep promoting you, keep giving you higher and higher wages. You'll get the basic inflation adjustments, sure, but you won't get an actual bump. So what you want to do is you want to focus on how to deliver value and you want to focus on how to communicate that you deliver that value and you want to focus on how to negotiate about all those things that you've done at work when the yearly review comes around. Anyhow, this topic is huge and there's much more to go into, but the main point if you're a person in school or in college and coming out of school or college is you need to get a mindset of a hustler. You need to get into the mode of actually doing this guerrilla tactic. You need to be able to get in the mindset of hustling and getting a job. And that mindset is like a treadmill going at about 10 miles per hour and you coming out of school is like you were going at about three miles per hour or five miles per hour. It's going to be a shock. So you might as well just jump in there. Trust me, it'll be well worth it. Now, if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship, which is not the whole job world, but actually a whole different thing where you start your own businesses, I suggest that you listen to Gary V. That's G-A-R-Y-V-E-E. -E. Just look him up on YouTube and you'll find him. Um, and he'll, he talks all about how to actually be an entrepreneur and what that entails. It's, there's a lot of similarities here. Um, so uh, when it comes to high performance individuals, they are high performance no matter what. Their entrepreneurs are high performance, their workers and working in a cube, they're high performance. So it just depends on what you wanna do in life. But here's what I would suggest. There's an awful lot of focus on being an entrepreneur and not everybody understands what that means. Being an entrepreneur is not easier than working for somebody. It's actually more difficult. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, great, but I would highly recommend 
that you still seek out a job, get yourself in the market and get in that mode of being a salesperson in, of sorts, being a marketing person of sorts, where you actually know your value and you can communicate it. If you can do that effectively, you can carry those skills over to being an entrepreneur and you know market your products properly and all that. I would really recommend that you seek out the highest paying jobs you can uh, while you're young so that you can start building wealth. And because you might have a lot of energy at this point, maybe you can put in 16 hour days. And so you cap your job at eight hours a day and you come home and you work eight hours a day on your hustle. You can do that. And there's there's no right or wrong here. But I will tell you that you, what you don't want to do is go, you know, try to be an entrepreneur and spend like five, seven years on it and have nothing to show for it. But if you need to pay your bills, if you need to be independent, if you need to get out of the house, if you, if you need to have your own insurance and all that, um, I highly suggest that you actually go get a job. And I suggest that you go get a job that is actually high paying that you are interested in so that you can make it into a career if you need to. Now, if you're an amazing entrepreneur, you're probably not even listening to this right now. And if you are listening to this, just go ahead and keep in mind that cash flow is really, really needed at this point. You need to have money coming in. And the best way of doing that is to actually go into this mode where you are a dynamic individual who can get any job and you market yourself properly. I promise you, not a lot of people are doing this. I have worked with tons of people over the, the last decade. They don't know how to market themselves. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to talk to other people. They don't know how to showcase how well they're doing, what their workload is like. They can't even speak to their managers properly. I have seen other people who are really good at their jobs, but they're really just assholes. So you can, you can have a person who's really good, good at their job, but they're assholes and nobody wants to work with them. Or they're terrible at their job, but they're amazing individuals that you want to go have a beer with. What you need to be is a person who is amazing to work with and delivers. And to actually fire on those two cylinders, you have to do that intentionally. Nobody's just landing on that personality by chance. Maybe some people are, but in this case, you need to go ahead and figure out how to do that and you need to go do that. Now I'm squeezing in a few more pro tips in there. Um, once you start working and if your job offers you a 401k, go ahead and max that out if you can and open an investing account and start putting money into that as well. Now I'll cover more about investing and real estate and all that stuff later. So I'm actually in the process of figuring out how to take my real estate to the next level within the next year or so I'll have a lot more to share about that okay so if you did everything properly you got yourself a job and you're excelling at that job you're getting bonuses you're getting a higher pay as you wanted and you're able to get more responsibilities coming your way and get promotions congratulations that's exactly what you want to do and what you want to do now is save your money not overspend don't just go buy a new car or something like that, save that money, invest that money, learn how to invest, read Jack Bogle's book. Uh, there's so many good books that he wrote. Please go read that. I will share investing advice as well, just to cover some basics. But in a general sense, go follow Jack Bogle to get yourself situated in the investing environment while you work and you, you know hone in your skills. And sure, for your side project or your other entrepreneurial tendencies that you want to take out in the market, go ahead and listen to Gary Vee and figure out what it is that you want to do. And while you're working, while the paycheck is coming, go hustle, go figure out what extra things you need to do to get yourself to the next level. Only you can do it. No one else can do it for you. And that's actually the beautiful part. Good luck. If you're listening to this on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'll talk to you later. And if you'd like to listen to my music, go ahead and search for Apostro, that's A-P-O-S-T-R-O, on any music streaming service that you have.